this is Tony Riggs. I'm an application engineer with Go Engineer. In this quick video, we're going to take a look at some of the tools inside SOLIDWORKS Composer to help us out with complicated animations. If we take a look at this example that I've got here, there's all kinds of location keys and property keys, camera keys, digger keys, and keeping track of all these in a lengthy animation can be you know, quite difficult. So we're going to look at some of the tools that can help us out uh, with some of those animations. If we flip over to a little bit simpler example, I'm going to come over and uh, play this animation. I basically have it highlighting along the length of chain. And we're going to take a look at what we can do to, to finish this animation up. Um, basically I've got a bunch of the different sprockets here and they're, they're just highlighting. We're using one of the effects uh, to, to highlight them. But I've got this last piece of chain here, and I really want to mess with the keys uh, for lighting this guy up and, and highlighting him. Uh, but they're all mixed together with all the rest of these keys. What I can do is with this component selected, if I come over here and start up uh, this filter, show keys for just the selected actor, and maybe, you know, if we just look for the property keys, that's fine. I'm not actually moving the components, so there aren't any location keys. I can see that there are a couple keys right here at the beginning. I really want these keys to move towards the end of the animation. So what I can do is simply grab those keys, and I'll use the little drag bar to pull it down here right to the end of the animation at, at 9 seconds. If I flip off the keys filter, we can take a look at where those guys went. The problem with uh, animation keys is there could be three, four, who knows how many keys buried down beneath uh, this one key uh, for all the different components. And so that's a nice way of, of you know, honing in on just the keys for the selected component. What I've also done uh, for this animation is come in and take a look at one of the effects that we can use. We can use a fade in, a fade out, but I actually used a hotspot. Uh, if we come in and, and select on a component and, and create a hotspot, it basically adds you know, two keys on either side of, of the middle key here. I can you know, move those together and uh, make them flash a little bit faster. Um, if I want to, I can come in and window around those guys and maybe you know make a copy of those keys you know pull them to there and then we can have this guy flash on and off a couple times so if we play the last little bit of that animation uh, that gear is going to highlight for us that's really nice when we come in and and want to draw attention to a specific component if we pull the timeline down a little bit further uh, maybe come in and pull in a, a label or a call out on one of these components. We'll see what happens in the timeline. So I'm going to come in and pull a, uh, a label there. What happens is kind of interesting. It's actually going to, because we're in a timeline, automatically fade that uh, annotation in and out. Now if we come to this, this spot where we're at the end of the uh, call out coming in. We can click on this guy and we can go over and we can look at some of the different properties uh, for that. The the text, we've got different things that we can pull in there. The text string, this is maybe a you know a sprocket. Okay. And so it's gonna tell us, hey, this is a sprocket. But as I come back and look at the animation a little bit more, we can see, hey, wait a minute, something happened to this uh, to this label. It started off, uh, it's still showing the cut extrude from when it came in at the beginning. So there's a nice option that we can use for this, uh, for this label. Uh, it's here on the properties toolbar. We can come in and set as neutral properties. That basically takes that uh, hand typed in label of sprocket and moves it also back to the beginning. So it, it stays sprocket right from the beginning. Uh, it still fades out. And that's one thing I've seen a lot of people have problems with when they add labels inside an animation. They go in and change the, the text in the label and it reverts back to the default 
text that came in from the beginning. So we've looked at a few different uh, tools inside the uh, animation timeline. I hope this was helpful for you. And again, this is Tony Riggs with Go Engineer, and watch for other composer videos in the future. Mm -hmm.